All right, what is going on, everybody? Today's video, we are going to do a PvP commentary talking about the new Ice Gauntlet artifact, Deep Freeze. Now, I spent a lot of time in the new expedition farming this, way too much time running that thing over and over and over again. We're not gonna talk too much about my terrible RNG. I wanted to talk about this Ice Gauntlet. I wanted to talk about the pros and cons of it, uh, my perspective, and uh, yeah maybe give you guys ideas for a build that you guys might want to run in the future. And so that's what this video is going to be. I got some footage from an OPR I've been running. I've been running this uh, this Ice Gauntlet for 10 to 12-ish hours, so this is just first impressions. I haven't ran it every single possible way, but I wanted to give you guys some ideas after having ran it, after having tested it, and, and those sorts of things. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. Now, uh, the reason why Ice Gauntlet, why run Ice Gauntlet? Well, as you guys know, if you guys are watching my channel, I like to run Spear and Rapier. And the back bar Rapier that I run is the Finisher Artifact, which gives 15% more damage to bleeding opponents. The Ice Gauntlet Artifact gives me 15% more damage to frozen, chilled, or snared opponents. So it's similar damage. If when I proc this, I'll do the same amount of damage as uh, an, an, an enemy that's bleeding with running finisher. But Ice Gauntlet has more survival capabilities. The healing Tomb, the ability to purge all dots off of me and get a heal off it. I'm running Healing Tomb on the Ice Gauntlet. It's purely a defensive weapon with this specific layout. Uh, that's really nice. I'm also running Ice Shower and I'm running, I think it's Ice Wall. And so Ice Shower just puts a frozen area on the ground, uh, allows me to proc the 15% and then the, the Ice Wall allows me to root enemies in place, which also can proc the 15% and it gives me control in fights. And so I like to, I wanted to run Ice Gauntlet in more of a group based scenario, solo, Rapier Spear is fantastic, but sometimes when you're running with a friend or two and they're getting focused really hard, I don't have the tools or capabilities in my kit to get enemies off of my off of my friends. And so I don't have the, the, the ability to hit an ice wall and root everybody in place, give my opponent, my friends major expedition, allow them to line of sight, pop a potion, get heals up, those sorts of things. And so I was like, this could be very good for a group play. Obviously, Ice Gauntlet has a lot of control. The ability to funnel people into an area, lock people down, these sorts of things, on top of the survival of purging all dots. And so that's why I wanted to try it. As far as the attributes go, I'm running the same attribute layout on my rapier setup. I got 350-ish decks, I got 250-ish con. I have not run uh, an int split. I haven't tried doing that yet or anything. The main reason for that is I don't have a good high gear score layout for running like an int based spec. I My gear is I'm running shirking heals and health, which is fine. Uh, but the main reason I can run this without any freedom is I have the 300 dex passive to where when I weapon swap after getting CC'd uh, off of cooldown, I, I have the ability to break those things. And so if I don't have that 300 CC passive or 300 Dex passive, I think I would need a few. Uh, I would need a few freedom, and so for that reason, I have yet to scale into Int. The other thing is, is I'm not running Ice Spike. I'm not running uh, Ice Pylon. I'm not running high damage Ice Gauntlet abilities. I'm merely using Ice Gauntlet defensively. I'm. I have one ability that does damage, and so the idea of doing split gems, I, I feel like it might potentially be a loss for me running like a split gem setup. Uh, I don't know for sure, obviously, but yeah, I'm only running one defensive thing and I was like, okay, well, if I'm procking 15% Ice Gauntlet damage, this will be good enough to figure out, right? This will be good enough to figure out if it's if it's good enough. And so uh, the two abilities that I'm running, Ice Shower and Ice, the, the Root, the Ice Wall, they both proc the 15% damage. They're quite nice. Uh, you'll see sometimes in this fight, it's already happened once where I can drop an Ice Shower or an Ice Wall and I can split people off. And so there'll be times where there'll be a healer and two, like if you go further back in the video, uh, there'll be a healer and there'll be two DPS and I'll be able to drop an ice wall and I'll split the healer off from the DPS. And that gives us that opportunity to really focus the healer and take them out, which is uh, something I can't do with rapier. And so it's really nice to just be able to focus a healer down like that uh, without getting CC'd nonstop. That's a, that's a huge bonus. Being able to funnel people into an area, like I said, is a huge bonus. Adding more healing to my spec 
also a huge bonus. Obviously, uh, Entomb is a, is a big reset. You'll see I'm gonna get focused here. It just kind of allows me to line of sight and get, get out of the way. And so all these things are good. All these things are good, severely outnumbered. This weapon is fantastic. Well, all this is good, but there, there are some cons. One of the main cons is I was looking up resources on how to proc Frozen. Frozen is one of the passives that it says it ha has. I found a website and it says that if you run a runestone enchant that, that does ice damage, you can proc Frozen. And I was like, okay, this, this is great. I already have a spear with that does frozen damage as the runestone, and it also has a frozen dot on it. If this functions just like rapier to where I can run keenly jagged on the spear and I get 15% more damage going offensive this is going to be extremely effective I can run a frozen rune gem and I won't just have the capability like they won't have to just stand in my dots they won't have to stand in my ice shower they won't have to stand in my ice wall uh, I'll actually be able to go full offensive and get the 15% damage that way well I did some testing and that doesn't work I don't know how to proc Frozen. <laughs> I did a lot of research. I couldn't find any reputable place that would tell me how to proc Frozen specifically. Uh, the Runestone gems do not do it from my testing. And so you're gonna see in this little fight right here where when we have a 3v2, I'm trying to drop like Ice Shower, I'm trying to drop Ice Wall, these sorts of things. And because of their line of sighting, I don't really get to take advantage of the 15%. So any sort of fight where you're in an even matchup, if they know you're going to run the ice gauntlet and get the 15%, they're just going to back out of it. They're going to back out of this and justifiably so. Like I, I dueled a couple friends. They saw that I was running the ice gauntlet. They just backed out of my ice shower. They're like, okay, well now you do 15% less damage. I ran a couple of arenas, uh, just pug groups. And yeah, they, sometimes your teammates, they would see you putting stuff down and they would back away because they didn't know what was going on. And then other people, the enemies would just run around it. They would line a sight and yeah, you're, you're not taking full advantage of the 15%. So uh, as far as I know, there's no way to just have the sticky 15%, if that makes sense, where you could just run a runestone gem and like I can put it on the spear and I can go full offensive and keep procking the 15%. It's basically a, an outnumbered situation style weapon, which is more than fine. I, I think it has its place. And, and keep in mind, guys, I'm not using this offensively. I'm not using Ice Gauntlet offensively. I know there are other builds out there with Ice Pylon. I know there's other builds out there with Ice Spike and other people are using this weapon way more offensively than I am and they're getting uh, major effects that way. I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that that's bad or anything. I'm just wanted to talk about it from more of a utility or defensive point of view. And so uh, would I recommend this weapon? Yes, I think this is, I think this is one of those weapons that's worth having in, in your toolkit. Uh, it's like, you know, it's like having a toolbox, right? And I was expecting this weapon to be one of those be it all like Swiss army knife style things where you just have, it has the capability to do, be very effective in a lot of different scenarios, like a good Swiss army knife, not one of those cheap, like $8 things, but like an actual good utility tool. Um, it's not that. I don't think it's that because unless I can find a way to proc Frozen, I think it's more of a, hey, when you're in an influence race and you're running with three or four people and you wanna do more small scale, this is going to be a great weapon to funnel people into an area, to allow your teammates to get line of sight, to protect your healer, uh, to give you more survival. Uh, my, my survival with this thing is just crazy. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't proccing 15% nearly as much. And because I'm in, heavy armor, uh, losing out of that 15% was, was quite noticeable. It was quite noticeable in my overall damage when uh, it was a, a, an even fight. And you see, I just have so much control where these two guys are trying to focus my teammates and I just have them locked down. And, uh, and yeah, so uh, that's overall. <laughs> we're, we're like eight, eight and a half minutes into my explanation on this. Hopefully this makes a lot of sense, but but yeah, it is, it is a very good artifact. It's just not the end all be all best artifact in every single situation. And so, um, yeah, those are my overall thoughts. Let's let's get into some of the commentary. And so, I have two friends uh, in this OPR. It's me and Hounds and uh, Robin here, and we're just trying to fight outside of this. We're trying to fight outside of this fort. Uh, you can see that 
they have two. The the enemy team has two of the forts. And as a three-man group, we like to go and try and back cap one and, and really put a lot of pressure. And so if we can get four, five, six, seven, ten people to come focus us over here, that's four, five, six, seven, ten people that are not at the middle point. If they don't do that, if they don't send people over to us, we can then just take this one. And so it's it's kind of a win-win situation to where we're giving uh, the rest of the people in our OPR a numerical advantage at the middle point. Obviously, they have to be able to cash in on it. Or we're just going to take this back cap and we're going to get it for free. And then we we help that way. So either way, we, we get funner, more small scaled, like not running across the entire group style outnumbered fights. Or we, we take the point. And so... Right now it's me and Robin, and we are just trying to take out these two people, and we almost have the healer dead here a few times, and we just take a, a few unfortunate CCs, which is what happens with fighting a healer. Sometimes when you fight a healer, you give them that one second or two second reprieve, they just pop back to full. And so it, it's an annoying little fight. You see uh, one of them also has the ice gauntlet. Uh, my other friend, Hounds, pops up, and the minute we kill the healer, the other guy goes down rather quickly. And so uh, not a big fight or anything, just, just trying to highlight what we're doing here. And so we, we run back in, we go back inside. Uh, we got a flail build here. This OPR was very, very tanky. It was a very tanky OPR, ran across a lot of healers, a lot of flail healer specs, uh, tanky brawlers, those sorts of things on this on this back cap. And so it was just a, it was a little bit harder to kill people, a little bit harder to kill people on the back cap. There wasn't as many ranged players uh, as you typically see in this, but that's okay. That's okay. I'd rather I'd rather fight brawlers and healers than you know chase a bow build across the map 20 times. So at this point, I'm trying to take out the spawn point. I, I know my friends can stay alive here, uh, or at least I thought they could. And I, yeah, uh, I have one teammate go down here. Hounds goes down, and so at this point, I'm going to try and focus the bow build. He's at half health. I'm going to hit a coup de gras, and you see as soon as I hit the coup de gras, he gets the. He gets the sacred put underneath him and he heals back to full. So I'm going to go into healing to him. We're going to go up top here. We're going to try to go up top here. And uh, one of my friends is getting focused pretty hard, but I have the healer and I have another guy. I have a, an axe build here also just trying to focus me. So I was like, okay, we had a 2v3. If I can keep two people on me, one of them is a healer. I know Robin can take out the other guy. I know he can get the 1v1 and take that guy out so that we can come back for a 2v2, which is basically what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to keep the healer full offensive. Uh, I see Robin takes a little bit of health, so I drop an ice shower between him and everybody else. That way he doesn't get focused. He still has the, the fire staff main uh, focusing him and, and trying to hammer him right now. I can't do much there, uh, but I can keep these other guys off of him so he's not getting focused any further. And so I'm taking a little bit of damage here. I'm going to pop my heals and everything. Uh, I did put Ankh on this spec. I did change that a little bit uh, because I have a little bit more healing coming in with healing to him. That Ankh is quite effective. I, I tried Tangle Vine and it makes sense when you crunch the numbers on it, running running things like Healing Tomb, Shirking Heals. I also have Stone Form. I get the heals coming in from that. Uh, the amount of healing I get running Ankh with this specific setup was, was actually quite effective. It's not needed to be effective, but it, it still is pretty good. But you see here, I, I, I am doing quite a bit of damage. I, I do have this guy almost dead, but yeah, there's a healer. He's going to drop sacred. This guy comes back to half health. But at this point, Robin comes back because he killed the other guy. And we are now then going to try to take out this, this ranged uh, bow build. Hounds comes back. So now we have a 2v3. I hit the wrong button. I go into Entomb. Uh, I thought it was funny. We... I thought it'd be funny to just sit there and entomb and do nothing because that, that was the meme with me running rapier in group play situations. So I, I can still meme it up and, and run entomb in group play situations. So they killed the range guy. We just have the healer left. We're going to take him out. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to show some footage in the background. You guys can feel free to go backwards or forwards. I got a, a few more fights here and a few more fights that I kind of talked over in the back. But it Ice Gauntlet provides a lot of control. It's very effective for applying control to a group. Uh, and that's probably what it's best for. So I'm going to end this video here. Well, I'm going to end the commentary here. If you guys have any questions or comments, please provide in the section below. I will do my best to answer it. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.